Well, hello, everybody. We are on Create Talks. I have one of my incredible leaders that we just had them graduate this year, just today, actually, David Pennington from the UK. Welcome, David. Hello, everyone. You're all right. Hello, Teresa. <laughs> hey, hey, if you know David, put that in the chat. We love you, David. We're so excited you're here. You're going to find out so much about David today and about his journey. Uh, we do love questions and we will prophesy and pray over healing as well at the end. So pop your name in the chat or any question that you have for David. Uh, but David, I, I want to hear about your journey, how you first started to really walk with the Lord, know if that was your calling to go into a pastoral position and your heart for the arts and prophetic art. Like, how did these two meet? So tell us a little bit about that so that we get to hear mm. you. Well, I was, uh, I went to Bible college and, and I, I came from a bit of a dodgy past, had a massive encounter with God, ended up going away for a year, then going to Bible college with my wife and we both studied a, de a degree in theology. And then you know, I had surgery on my back in my last year and I thought I was going to go back on the ambulance service because I was working as a student paramedic. And um, I really thought that was where I was going to go. And then I was like, oh, no, with the surgery, it kind of like ended that career, it ended that lifestyle. And people kept giving me words about being a pastor. And I'm thinking, that's the one thing I do not want to do. I don't want to work <laughs> in the church. I don't want to be a pastor. I don't even want to work with kids, you know, <laughs> that kind of attitude. And I was like, I tried everything uh, to stay away from it. And then I kind of like got to the point where I was like, I remember saying to God, I will go anywhere. I will do anything. I will be anything. I will say anything that he tells me to do. And if this is meant, if this is from him, then I will allow that door to open and, and I will go with that. So I applied in our movement. We had to apply to be a minister and I applied. I had the interview and they asked me, why did I want to be a pastor? And I said, I don't want to be a pastor. <laughs> and, they, and they said, well, you do know you've applied to be a pastor. And I said, yeah, but what I want to do is I want to be in the marketplace um, I want to take advantage of my position because I am a crazy, not a Christian, not, not, like, not too crazy, but you know, yeah. I love, I love Jesus so much, but I thought having that title would get me into places and I could get away with things. And it, <laughs> and it has, it really has in, in, in my walk so far, uh, I have worked in coffee shops. I have worked in the marketplace quite a bit. Uh, I go into schools and stuff. And so that kind of like opening, because I am a reverend, kind of like I get away with a lot of things. And so that's how I kind of opened that door to becoming a pastor. I've always been creative ever since I was a kid, but I never really took it serious because uh, when I was in school, uh, I was in a, in, in a very strict school where creativity wasn't really looked upon like as, as a thing. You know, I remember creating something and one teacher said to me what do you want to do when you grow up I said I want to work for Disney and they just laughed at me you know and and from that moment on I kind of like all right and they went you there's no way you could ever work for Disney you you haven't got the skills you you, you know you're gonna to have to be an American all these things they kept putting like limitations on everything and so I just kind of like put it on the back burner yeah. and then when I was at Bible college I started to draw again come on I felt that creativity come in but it was only when I was training as a pastor, I was in my, I think I was in my second year or five years as a training as a pastor, did I start really drawing. And then the lady came to the church and she said, and she gave me a prophetic word. And she said, I see you as a prophetic artist and you should start to paint. And I'm thinking, I have never picked up a paintbrush in my life. <laughs> and I don't even know what prophetic art is. <laughs> Uh, and so that's kind of like how that door opened just by seeking that, you know, I wanted to take advantage of that, you know, I wanted to bring art into create and creativity into the marketplace and not just in the church. Uh, although I, I feel like it's for both. Um, you know, I, I don't know if that's what you want to hear <laughs> or if there's yeah. any more. 
Oh. No, no, I think that's really good. I think like for those of you that are listening, put in the chat, if you dealt with like uh, things that people said against you that caused you to be derailed from what you've really been created to be. I mean, David, your testimony is amazing about being in a place where you, you just love to create and then a teacher really in a sense, like taking all of uh, all of the um, love that you have, the passion that you had, the dream that you had, and kind of throwing it in the trash can and saying, hey, don't pursue that. It's not, you can't do that. And how much that damages our desire to do that. It's like crazy. So if you felt that way, that's not what God says. God says that your dream is important to him. And that it, if David can like really awaken his dream, you can do the same because when God gives you a dream, no man should be able to take that from you. And so we just release that to you. I love that. Uh, but then David, like, how did you hook up with Create Academy with me? How did that, how did this whole thing start to shift for you being, you know, being a pastor, going after that, doing art, but then what was the shift? How did that happen? Wow. Well, like I was saying before, the lady told me about prophetic art and she saw me as a prophetic artist and I knew what the prophetic was, but I didn't know what prophetic art was. And so I do what everybody else does, you know, and you, you go on Google. Um, and then I, I, I couldn't find anything decent on, on Google in terms of what I was looking for. And I thought, I'm, a, I'm not really a reader. So I, I was just getting bored of reading. So I thought, I'm going to go on YouTube because I'm a visual person. Uh, and I learn a lot <laughs> on YouTube. I've learned so much on YouTube. Um, and so I just typed in prophetic arts uh, on YouTube. And uh, Sid Roth came up with this. Uh, he's a, a, a guy who's on TV show in America and and his, he had a show on YouTube and I, that I saw and, and this lady came up called Teresa Dedman. You might have heard of her. Um, and so, uh, <laughs> so I, I came across that. I watched it and I was just captivated by your story that you, there was healing in art because in my mind's eye, in my heart, I already knew that. And I already envisioned people being healed because when you look at paintings, when you look at creativity, when you hear music, it transforms you and you can feel something in, in your heart. I, I, well, that's how I encountered it anyway. And yeah. so listening to your story and the one thing that blew me away was the story of the stick man and thinking any, everybody and everybody can be a, 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 you know, a creative that we were, and again, what you said about, we're all created in God's image. And if we're all created in God's image, then we're all creative. If we have, yeah. we, if we all have a thought in our head, <laughs> then we're all creative. And I'm thinking, maybe I can paint, you know? And so yeah. I came across your book. I read your book. It transformed my life. You know, I was, my, one of my favorite movies is, is The Lion, Witch in the Wardrobe. And so- yes realizing that world you know uh, I was very angry with Lucy as a kid because you know I sat in wardrobes most of my kids in my as a child and I could never find Narnia so I used to hate Lucy um <laughs> and so uh that that's kind of how I found Create Academy and and I I kind of like <laughs> googled your Create Academy what your website actually and I looked at the courses and I'm thinking this is exactly what I want to do this is what I want to be a part of and so I thought, I'm going to bite the bullet and I'm going to go for it. And I shared it with my leadership team. I said, this is what I fancy doing. I'm going to pay for it. And they were like, no, no, we want to pay for it. We feel there's something on your art. Let's let us pay for it. And I'm like, what? OK. And so I joined Create Academy. And, uh, oh, I could go into that because that, that absolutely transformed my, transformed my life as well. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy how we we are in a space of. God, I love your journey because it's a journey where it's kind of like breadcrumbs, like you're following, you're following your heart, you're following, it's, it's all connected to when you were younger, it's all connected to the story of why God created you, the, the song, the DNA of how when God spoke in and, and created life in David Pennington, this life was something that you were just finding out all of the ways that God has been speaking to you. Uh, but this journey of coming into Create Academy and it, 
not ever like really knowing me except for my book and, and but looking at these courses. So, so in that first year, when you were doing the, the Create Academy, in a sense, level one with all the e-courses, how was your identity formed? What, what happened? How was it transformed? Give us a visual, give us a chance to see what David Pennington was like before and then after. Well, well, I'll, I'll mention as well that this has only happened in the last four years. So I've only started painting four years ago and it was only two years ago that I found Create Academy. And I had a mindset of, uh, you know, that I, I was, well, growing up as a kid, when you're told that you're not good enough, you know, that you're not qualified enough, that you're not, you're not accepted or, you know, nothing's going to change. You, you, you know, we live in a town where not many people leave the town and they kind of born there, die there kind of thing. And, you yeah. know, and, and that just didn't sit right with me. And, and tr tr doing this whole process of Create Academy is, is not only just transformed my life in terms of my identity, and I painted my identity. And that's why I brought this painting behind me, because this, this was my identity piece that I painted, because I was a, a, a lecturer at Bible College um, said that I was a maverick but without the arrogance. And I never knew quite what that was about, you know, that I would be, uh, that I wouldn't go with the flow, but I would challenge things and start things and pioneer things. But I was, I wouldn't be afraid to, to, to step out of the boat and cause a bit of a, uh, a storm. <laughs> wow. um, and so that, that's kind of like what happened during Create Academy. I didn't only find who I was as a child of God, that mm. I realized that I could go to my father and that he trusted me and that he loves me. Come on. And that mindset, which has shaped, it shifted my whole mindset, that is through the renewing of the mind that instead of listening to the lies, I would listen to the father about who he says that I am. Yeah. You know, what does he see me? How does he see me? And, and where, what are the truths I'm, in my life that he sees? And I've had some crazy encounters with him where he's like, He's speaking to me and telling me truth and not listening to the lies. I was such a people pleaser. Yeah. I was always bothered about making people happy, even though, to, even to the point of exhaustion. And I realized that actually I'm all right being a horse that's booking. You know, the Maverick horse is a Mustang yeah. horse. It, it runs free. It runs with other Mustang horses. They all run free. They're all just born to to oh. run free and i that's where i feel like i am right now that i'm a, i'm allowed to be me i'm a I, it's okay to be me it's okay to be who i want to be and and have that mindset of i don't have to like people please i don't have to worry about if i'm good enough uh, my self esteem's kind of created in christ <laughs> um and then that's helped me to be a better pastor and a better artist. Yeah. But I've seen my, I mean, you, you'll probably, you've probably seen yourself, Teresa, that yeah. my artwork from day one to now has accelerated. And my ears have opened to the prophetic because I listen to the Father and I don't listen to lies. So, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a big, it's a big transition. We were, talking about that in our leadership track in Create Academy just today, we we're talking about how it's like a culture <clears throat> when you change your identity, uh, you really have to have a place like what you're talking about, David, where you can walk it out. It's, it's just too familiar to go back into the old way of thinking. And so in Create Academy, we're doing courses together. The courses that I've created, we're sharing in small groups together. We're, we're not just like, listening to content for information, but for transformation. And there's, there's encounters throughout the whole entire thing that we do with the Lord. And, and so there's something like that's needed for us to truly uh, become what I would consider authentic. So in create Academy, people might think, Oh, it's just about an ability creating with art, dance, writing, fashion. No, no, it's, it's about what, what Dave is talking about is this inner identity work where you start to realize that you really are a son, that you can fail, that you're in a community of believers that love you and support you. When all of that like clicks into place, 
then your art or your dance or your writing goes to the next level because you're actually secure in who you are and you're able to discern is that God's voice or is that a lie mm. and and that's the power of what you're talking about guys it's like don't do it alone I mean I think that is the tragic thing that happens to so many uh, creatives is that they try and focus upon their ability to become great versus God's ability to love them unconditionally and they don't have to work for love because they're actually um, involved in finding his love and working from love and and we all that have been involved in this understand this principle is so huge but it's something that we pray for all of you to find because true identity in Christ, is what will spark your greatest work. It will spark original work, like the Maverick horse that you have in the back. I mean, or my painting down back here, it's like, that's what it will spark. Um, but I, I love it, share because people need to know about the risks that you've taken. We're talking about risk. We're talking about walking in faith. What are the risks that you've taken and, and what you've walked in in faith in, the, in this past year? Because you've been in my leadership track so share a little bit about some testimonies, some miracles that have happened. Wow. I mean, have you got three hours? Uh, <laughs> no, totally. Uh, I, I have I have literally, and and my my friends maybe watching will all just know the, the testimony. I literally have a different testimony every other day, you know, of what God is doing. Uh, he is so good, you know. I'll, I'll start with testimonies and I'll share about a bit of a risk at the end as well. What um you know this year we well yeah we've this year we've had to move house like five times in two years because the landlord always seems to sell the houses a different landlord each time uh seems to sell the house as, as we live there and we kind of got asked to move out quite quite quickly and uh, we had literally one day to go and we couldn't find anywhere to live anywhere at all um and it was looked like it was looking as if we were going to be homeless. And we even had to talk to our local council, our local government area, uh, about what would what would happen. And they were talking about splitting us up as a family, and we would have to go into hostels. And we were not agreeing with that. You know, the leadership team were not agreeing with that. And so we kind of had to just trust God. And I know that's oh yeah, that's an easy thing to say, but it, you, <laughs> when you've got nothing and you've got nowhere to go, that is literally the only thing you can do. And, and, and so we had one day to go and I run a group uh, on a Thursday, the trees are talked about create live. And one of the ladies in my group who lives in Amsterdam was looking on the website in my local area for a specific house. And she found it and I didn't even know it existed. And uh, it was in the right town, in the, in the town that we needed to move into as well, because of my kids were in a, in a school there and we were actually living an hour away in terms of walking to the school. And so we wanted to move into that area because we really felt like God was wanting us in that town. And um, <laughs> this lady in Amsterdam finds this house that was affordable to us. She rings them from Amsterdam to the UK to speak to them. She passes on my details and they ring me and they say, we come and view it. We go and view it. The lady who just happens to be in charge of the estate agents um, was adamant that we had to have this house. And so she literally stopped everybody from viewing it. You know, maybe you shouldn't try that life if you, you wanted this house. I do apologize. But uh, she was adamant that we had to have it. And she said, you can have this house, you know, 10 days, it's yours. And even though we failed the credit because we weren't earning enough, God made a way and like we got the house we're I'm in it right now and oh, we're in the town that we need to be and we're seeing things happening in this town because we've moved here and I'm not saying it's us I'm saying it's God you know it's just that's just one of them you know uh I'm, I'm, I'm I, I take risks by doing prophecies in the streets and uh, and I prophesied I flew over to California to be with Teresa and the team and again that that plane ticket was bought for me completely out the out the blue wasn't expecting it and um we part of my uh, on the plane um i was sat next to a guy and we, i already shared with Teresa my dream that we have the farm 
in, in, in the town that we're having, that we want to do a retreat. We want to be able to pour into the community. We want to grow food for the group community. So I'm sharing this dream with this guy who's next to me. And he's actually saying to me, that's what I do, you know, as a job. I says, I help people run farms. I also help them manage them from a money point of view. And he says, we need to connect because that's what I do. I'm like, what are the chances in the, like, in the entire world? I just happen to sit next to a guy that actually knows what I need to do and how to get there. And so I ended up prophesying over him. And he didn't know prophetic art. He didn't even know about prophecy. He wasn't a Christian. And so I start sharing uh, a picture I painted prophesied over him and he says i can see it i can understand it but i've never seen anything like it and he said i'm so defound dumbfounded and he said he's transformed his life just by listening to that one one thing you know it's just amazing the opportunities that we get and if we don't take a step out to share with somebody exactly what god is saying exactly. then we're actually stopping them for encountering the holy spirit encountering exactly. god i made the, like that guy in the plane did not know jesus one bit never went to church but through that encounter now he knows that jesus loves him that is is, is like on his case and wants to know him yeah um and i will quickly share the risk that i'm doing in a moment we uh, a part of our end of year project we had to do something that really pushes and stretches us and i can paint and i thought that's not going to stretch me that's not going to push me and so I decided to create a book. Uh, I'm doing a kid's book. And um, <laughs> funnily enough, um, I've written it out. I was drawing it out. But I was doing it with my kids because it's a book for kids by kids. And we want to talk about not your generic Bible stories like Noah. Although they're all good. Noah, Daniel and Lions Den, you get your generic kids' stories that they all go through. But what, what, I'm, what I'm talking about is the presence of God. How can kids encounter the presence of God? And so I've done a, a kid's story on the presence of God called him Bobby Big Adventure. And so I'm drawing it out. I'm thinking, this is taking me forever. I need an <laughs> iPad. And I remember Laurie sharing that she had an iPad and she was helping. It helped her so much to do her book and she got done fast. I'm like, Lord, I need an iPad. But I can't afford an iPad because it's like nearly two grand for an iPad for what I need. And Anshin's on now. I noticed Anshin's on, and she was she's in my group, and she didn't know I needed an iPad. But we went round to her house, and we were just loving on her and her family because they are such an amazing people. And we just share the story of this book, and then we're saving up for this iPad. And then her husband Tom comes up to me and goes, "I've got this iPad on the shelf. Do you think you'd want to use it?" I'm like, "Yes." So actually, oh. it's fast tracked my book, and it's literally ready to print. Uh, and it's so exciting that and that was taking a risk you know you know I, I I could have just done a painting I could have just done something I was comfortable with but actually I've done a book for kids about the presence of God which brings encounter done by my kids for kids and I, I've done a bit of it as well because I'm a big kid but it's going to go out to many kids and hopefully they're going to be impacted by the presence of God uh, and, and yeah, just take risks, get out that boat and stop being comfortable. <laughs> I agree with you. And, and even the healings that have happened, you know, there's so much that you've shared about, about the book, about the things that you've done in your home, but also just about like the risk that you took to, to can share. I, can that. I share that? Yeah. I forgot yeah. that one. I need to share this one because this was, one. this one was amazing because um, again, I, I, when I paint prophetically, especially in front of church, you know, it's different when you paint in your studio. So I can spend weeks on a painting and for some reason I can't get it done in weeks. But yet in the presence of God in church, I mean, I can do it in the presence of God at home, but I'm a bit too perfectionist and we're working on that. We're smashing that. But when I'm painting prophetically, I know I have a time limit. So I'm pressured to, I have to get this painting done. And I went, we did a prophetic event at church and it was a five foot by four foot painting. I'm thinking this is a big risk because if I don't paint this right, it's not going to look what it's meant to look like. And people want to get encounter. And I painted it. And this is the painting I did. And so I've, I've got it here. And so um, 
I don't know if you can see that all right. Yeah, I know it's beautiful. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that's that was it. And it's it, it was the the bleeding woman who touches the hem of Jesus' garment. And so that's what I felt like um, I wanted to paint. But then as I'm painting it and I'm praying and I'm worshiping and I'm la- I, I'm literally one on one with the Holy Spirit when I paint. And so we're partnering with the Holy Spirit. And what I was reminded of is when you, again, you you, you talked about with, with Sid Roth was, you know, Moses created the staff, uh, the snake uh, on the staff, and people yeah. looked at it and they were healed. And I'm thinking, and I really felt like that dropped into my spirit. And as I'm like, and then my senior leader, Craig, said to me, I, he wanted me to share what the painting was about. And as I'm sharing and I'm telling what it was about, I said, the woman touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And instantly she was healed. And so I said to the people, what I wanted them to do is I wanted to come and I wanted them to touch the painting because there's nothing special about me. There's nothing special about the paint or the canvas, but I partnered with the Holy Spirit and I believe there's healing in this painting. So I asked them to come and touch the hem of the garment. And so people did and eight people were instantly healed. Come they on. felt physically physical change. They knew Ooh. they'd been healed and set free and I'm like wow that actually works <laughs> you know that, that's the first time I'd ever seen healing through art from personally I've heard about it I've, I've read about it but encounter it for myself and I'm like not just one person but eight people and I'm like oh my goodness <laughs> it's like so crazy isn't it when you see it when you see God move because you know it can't be you it's the Holy Spirit through you And it's just such an incredible thing to see how we have been created to bring healing to others through what we create with, with the power of Jesus. And it's so, that's such a powerful testimony. Well, David, if you could say like one thing to the creatives that are listening out there uh, today, what, what do you want to say? Well, if you're creative, which everybody is, (laughs) um, you just have permission to play. I know we, we say that quite a lot at Great Academy, but that is literally uh, what I've learned, that I have permission to play. But when I say permission to play, this is the analogy I always use to, with, with my group on, on Create Academy, is as a father, and I've got three girls, you know, when, when, I, when, when they come up to me and they ask me to play, I play their games. I don't go up to them and say, girls, let's play my game. Let's play what I want to play today. No, no, no. My girls come up to me and go, daddy, can you play Barbies? And I'm like, yeah, let's do that. You know, but I'll do it because they want to do it. And so when we play with the Holy Spirit, when we play with the Father, when we play with Jesus and we paint or create or write or do poems or sing, we're doing it with him and we're just playing, you know, And, and out of that, right comes comes creativity comes this intimacy because for for me first I get to play and it's out of the playing that I get to experience the intimacy of 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 the Holy Spirit And, and that's what drives me to create because I want to encounter the Holy Spirit through everything that I do I am not capable I I still say I don't know how to paint because I literally am winging it in terms of like I don't know how it comes out because all I do is play. And when I play and create things, I'm like, whoa. And my wife comes up to me and goes, how did you just paint that? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> and that is just creating with the Holy Spirit. But I, 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 I add on to that, creating and playing on your own is good, but you need a community. For yeah. me, community has been so vital. Uh, and <laughs> the story of joining Kuwait Academy, I, I wanted to do it on my own. And I've shared this before that I, I wanted to do it on my own. And I actually, for the first two sessions of being on live with, with Therese and the team, I used to like come off just before we went into groups because I didn't want to interact with anybody. I, I wasn't very good at talking to people. I wasn't very good at sharing my feelings or being open or even like prophesying. And all that has come. And this confidence I have now was be- it's because Teresa has brought this out of me. She already she saw something in me, and that's because of community coming together as community and and leaning on one another. You know, it, it's rubbing shoulders. Iron sharpens iron. 
that's kind of what I've learned through career. Kind of, and I have a family now. I, I don't just even say that willy nilly. You know, I have a family who are all over the world. Uh, and they are my brothers and my sisters and Mama T. We call her Mama T. <laughs> yeah, totally. You know, so, it's, it's so crazy. I love I love what you're saying because play with Jesus, play with Papa God, play with the Holy Spirit is so great. Um, I love what you shared in your testimonies from life. Um, guys, if you want to know more about Create Academy, please, please, please just look at it. It's on my website, TeresaDebman.com. You can check it out down below, scroll down, and then there's a dream 22. If you put in that code when you're checking out uh, for the monthly subscription, you'll get 50% off of the first month. We just want to bless you. But now we want to prophesy and we want to bring healing to you. So put your name in the chat if you would like a prophetic a prophetic word, either through creativity, through whatever it is that, that we feel from the Holy Spirit, or if you need healing. Tell us the pain level you're in and we'll release healing to you as well and what's wrong. So go ahead, put that in the chat. My team is going to let me know the names and who you are, and we're going to go after it. Um, let's just see. Let's see. This is a great, as we're looking for those, this is a question from Randy. How have doors opened within your church to incorporate creativity in the last year? Oh, wow. Well, um, I, I'm surrounded by a team that is just uh, so free uh, and so open. And that's due to my senior leader, Craig. You know, when I first came to my church at CLC uh, and I had the interview um, and they asked me what I wanted to do. And I'd been hemmed in before and I didn't know who I was in terms of identity. I didn't know what God wanted me to do. And so I said, I just don't know. And Craig said to me, he said, what about your art? And I went, oh, no, no, no. That's just a hobby. That's mm -hmm. just a hobby. And he said, no, no, that's a ministry. Come on. Said, There's something in your art that you, when you create, it brings life and releases life. And I just laughed at him because I was like, <laughs> what? whatever whatever and literally um this is no like joke I, I, i'm like 10 minutes later i go to the loo i won't go into details with that but i, I get a phone call off the the leader of our movement john glass he, at the time he was the leader of our mo movement so he's like the pope of elim and he, he rings me up and goes i've seen your artwork can i share it i'm like what the heck's happening you know, and there's me thinking it's just a hobby. And then Craig just spoke something out. And now the leader of our movement has seen my artwork and wants to share it. And so I'm like, okay, maybe there's something in this. And this was just before starting Create Academy. And so not only have they, my church, seen the fruit of the Create Academy, uh, uh, of my creativity through Create Academy, we're, we're, the, we're, we're, we're releasing others in the church to find their creative like juices you know they're, they're creating we've got a, a lovely couple called gary and cheryl and and they share and they bring creativity you know it's just it started something in the church where creatives are coming out now and going oh i do this or i'm an art teacher and like beforehand there was no creativity in the church at all and now we're painting live we're we're we're, we're releasing people to be equipped and uh, we're just seeing healings and people being set free from paintings. What the heck? <laughs> that is so good, isn't he? And it's going to continue. We, we do have some people that uh, need healing. So Christine Owen needs healing of legs and spine. So uh, let's release here. I, wanna, I want you to look at this painting right now. And I just release, Christine, both your limbs your legs, your spine to come into alignment. Just like this woman is just free to move. We just release freedom. I saw freedom of movement. So to release that, just look at the painting, just like what, uh, just like what David's been talking about. And I want you to kind of move around a little bit and see if you have better movement and see if the pain has decreased and then let us know, but keep looking at that picture and let us know. And then uh, Carrie Kingsbury, Carrie, welcome. Carrie wants a prophetic word. Do you have something for her, David? 
I do. <laughs> and uh, I have actually a, a picture that I, I, I painted, and, and it's this one. Oh, come on. And I just, I, it's so weird because I was like, oh, God, I've just picked this up because I knew that the next person was up. I had to pick this up. And I'm thinking, what if it's a guy? And uh, <laughs> but it, it just happens to be for the, what was, what was the name? Sorry. It is, a, it is, a, hold on a second. It is a Kerry Kingsbury. Kerry, Kerry. Yeah, I, I just felt like we got that the Lord is just saying that you are his precious daughter, that as, as, as you be you, he's holding on to you and he's spinning you around like his little girl. And he's, he's just wants to just to bless you uh, and take you to new levels. And as you are intimate with him, as you abide in him and you abide in him, you, you abide in him and he abides in you. The Holy Spirit will, will manifest out of you and you will have a voice. <laughs> and you will find your your daughtership, your sonship in him, that you are you are his little girl and he is well pleased. Wow, I love that word. I, I um I, this is crazy because I feel like there's there's lots of people that need prophetic words. There's Lisa, Lisa, Simone, Tabor, welcome, Monica, Steve Dow, Dan. Rafiki, uh, Louise, Moynet, Monahan, Tabitha, Tabo, Simone. Wow, tons of great people. Um, Lizette from Peru. I, I kept, we're going to prophesy over all of you at the same time. I'm going to go first and then I'm going to give this to, to David. I, I kept hearing like this uh, roar, David. It was like this roar, like from, from the lion. And you talked about a, a really Narnia at the beginning. And I just released the colorful lion, the lion that's going to stand guard. The lion that if you look in his eyes, see the tenderness and his heart, he wants you to come to him and give him everything that you need because he's roaring over uh, anything that anything that's happening in your life that has been painful. I just released that over you. And, uh, and it's like a, a, a healing roar. So I bless you with that. Uh, let me know what that means, you guys. And David, I want you to give them a prophetic word as well. Yeah, this is the image I got. Um, oh, come on. Yay, so that's beautiful. As, as you look into the mirror, I think I just really feel like, especially identity tonight, uh, I feel like as you look into the mirror, it doesn't matter if you're male or female, as you look into the mirror, mirror you will see not only do you see yourself but you will actually see jesus through you and that's what people see when you go out and you be you i mean like i know some of these guys are on here tabo and and, and dan rafiki and, and and tabitha you you just you you carry the presence of god you are the presence of god he is manifesting himself through you and so as you look into the mirror but as people look into your eyes this is what they see they don't just they don't just see you. They don't see a person. They see Jesus because you carry him that you <laughs> he manifests out of you. It's almost I always I always use this analogy of uh, he seeps out of us. He sweats. He's sweating out of us because I, I want it to be that tangible. I want it to feel like as you look in as next time you sweat. And I know this is a bit gross, but when you next time you go gross, just <laughs> rub your fingers together and just just picture that you are you are sweating out jesus's goodness and you you are you're supposed to leave that over people so as you come into contact with people you they will manifest you will manifest jesus into their lives oh come on i love that um and right now we just released healing to christine and mona's family members we just released healing to both of you your family members and helene evans who needs healing of a, a abdominal issues we just release healing to you right now in jesus name guys uh we have to go man we just got started david i i want you to pray for people right now and guys just get ready because when david prays he's going to pray for uh just to usher in the presence of god in ways that you couldn't like like four years ago he would never have thought that he'd be sitting here with me talking about these miracles he would never have thought that but god 
but God. And so but David, I, I want you to pray for people that are listening now. Yeah, definitely. And I'm going to leave you with these two pictures. You know, we've got the Holy Spirit. You're pouring it in and the Holy Spirit's coming out. Come and on. Then you're basking. You're basking in the presence and his glory oh. is just falling down on your face. And I just really want to just release that over you guys, that his yeah. presence is falling over you. That as, as you, I don't want to rush into that. Let's just say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we just want to thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your presence. I want to thank you for who you are. You know every single person that's on tonight. You know every single need that is that is needed, that wanted, that is desired. You know our hearts. You know our wants. And I just want to ask you, Lord, that you'll just release that that picture of the water pouring into the, the glass where it's overflowing and the Holy Spirit just manifests himself out. I pray that over every single person's life, Lord, that your hearts will be transformed, that you will receive a renewing of the mind as you're intimate with the presence of God, that you are good enough to be in his presence, that you have been released <laughs> into his presence. You are allowed to be in his presence. We no longer have to live in the, in, in, in the thoughts of living in the Old Testament where only the one person and the priest could go in. No, no, we're in the new covenant where his arms are open wide and he is desperate for your attention. Yeah. And he's chasing after you. And he's like, daughter, son, I love you. I want you. Now come and spend time with me and let's create. Let's transform this world and let's start by the one. It all starts by the one person, the, the, the smile, a hello, that I love you. I, I'm, you're, 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 so, you're so good. <laughs> you know, thank you for my shopping. Thank you for being, for serving me. And I just release more of his goodness, more of his favor, more of his presence in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! That's so powerful, David. Wow. <laughs> well, guys, let, uh, share this with people that need to know about the healing power of Jesus and about who he is. And David, thank you so much for joining. Love you so much. Yeah. And blessings upon you. I'll be talking to your pastor, Craig, and you tomorrow morning. Oh, you, afternoon for you. But blessings, everybody.